Okay, so we want to solve this by completing the square, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, you know, what I do, you know, this is a non-factorable quadratic. Okay, I can't factor this. Um, there is a solution, however, I just can't factor, right. all right? So you always look to see, all right, can I factor? Um, and in this case, I can't. So what I do is I have the option to do this by completing the square. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, okay? And I get x squared plus 4x, and I'm going to do a plus blank is equal to 1 plus blank. Now, th my whole objective is to turn this side into a perfect square trinomial, yes. okay? Now, I do that by taking my middle term, 4, Dividing it by 2 and then squaring it. Why dividing it by 2? Good question. Okay. Let me, let me, here, let me finish this okay. so then I can go back to tell why. All right. So that's going to simplify to 2 squared, which is 4, right? So 4 is going to go here and here. Now I can factor this. What is this going to factor to? x plus 2, x plus 2. So think about what we just did, okay? I'm going to do x plus 2. Yes, this factors to x plus 2 times x plus 2. This is what we call right here, what, and we have to create this, all right? This is what we call a perfect square trinomial, okay? And the reason why it's called that is because I now have something times itself, x plus 2 times x plus 2, where I could just call this x plus 2 quantity squared. Yeah. Think about what you're doing. When you take your middle term and you divide it by 2, you're getting two numbers that are going to add to that middle term. Mm -hmm. The act of dividing by 2 gives, gives you that part of it. Then you so ask no yourself, what that middle term is, you're always, going to divide by always two. divided by 2. Okay. Because you want to find, because you're creating a perfect square trinomial. Yeah. And when you have a perfect square trinomial, you get a binomial, two binomials that are the same that are multiplying by itself. Yeah. So when you take that middle term and divide it by 2, then you get um, uh, uh, you know, you're getting those two numbers that are going to add to that middle term. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you cut something in half, you're getting two parts that are going to add to that, yeah. okay? The last part, when you square it, okay, gives you two numbers that multiply to the last term, right. okay? The act of doing this creates a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Therefore, every time you do this, you're going to get two binomials that are the same that you square. And then what you have, you know, if we finish out the equation, this is 5 equals 5. Now what I can do is I can solve this using the square root property. Mm -hmm. And that every time, this will always yeah. work, okay? So I can square or take the square root of both sides, okay? And then I solve it and I get, you know, x plus 2. It gets rid of the square. Right. So now all of a sudden I've gone from a quadratic to something that's a linear equation that I can solve is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. And then I subtract 2 from both sides and then I get this equation x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay. And the reason, you know, we're getting this, these numbers, you know, I can't take the square root of 5. Right. And I can, it's just going to give me a decimal. Yeah, it's not... It's that not, and, that's, and this is why we can't factor it, because we're getting an answer like this. If we could factor it, we get nice and neat numbers. Right. But since we can't factor it, we get weird solutions like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to add 4 to it. Yeah, so the first thing, first things first. In order to do this, we have to divide, we have to have a leading coefficient of 1. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to divide both sides by, or everything, by my leading coefficient. Yeah. 
okay? Then what I have is I'm going to get x squared plus 3 halves x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I can complete the square. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, okay? And I'm going to get x squared plus 3 halves x plus blank is equal to 2 plus blank, okay? Now this one's a little bit different because I have a fraction as my middle term. Mm -hmm. All right, watch, what's ha watch what happens. All right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take 3 halves. I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. Now, because I'm dealing, I wrote that, I wrote it that way because I'm dealing with fractions. Okay, um, if I'm dividing by two with a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by a half. Right. All right, that's the other thing you got to remember. All right, now uh, that gives me three fourths squared. Okay, square your numerator, square your denominator. I'm going to get uh, nine over sixteen. All right. So now, let's go back up here. And that's what you're going to plug in to the blank? Uh, yes, 9 sixteenths. All right. So now at this point, um, let's look at this left side. It's All right. Very it's not pretty. But guess what? This is factorable. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. All right, um, and I'm going to do this. Two, 2 over 1 is going to turn into 32 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths. i got to combine those. Mm -hmm. All right, but let's look at the left side. Now, if I were to factor this, what two numbers are going to add to 3 halves but multiply to 9 sixteenths? That is a very good question. It's a really good question, yeah. right? So let's think about this, all right? The act of dividing this number by 2, okay? The, and this is where this part comes, is, is very important. Uh -huh. The act of dividing my middle term by 2, all right, cut this number into two parts, which is 3 fourths, yeah. right? 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. So think about this. 3 fourths plus 3 fourths gives me 6 fourths, which simplifies to 3 halves. 3 fourths plus 3 fourths, those two numbers add to 3 halves yeah. to my middle term. Now, if I take 3 fourths times 3 fourths, I get 9 sixteenths. Crazy. Crazy, huh? Yep. So now. So think about it. What two numbers are going to multiply to 9 sixteenths but add to 3 halves? And that number is 3 fourths. Now the cool thing about this is that every time I do this, 3 fourths is right there. Yeah. Every time I divide by 2, all of a sudden, if you know that, if you understand the concept of how I obtained this, because this is a perfect square trinomial, mm -hmm. okay, this factors... 2x plus 3 fourths times x plus 3 fourths, which becomes x plus 3 fourths squared. And on this right side, 32 plus 9, what is that, 41 over 16? So 41 over 16. The, you know, the thing of it is, is that I, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just dealing with fractions. Yeah. The other example was pretty easy. This one's a lot harder. Fractions are messy. Fractions are fun. Fractions are your friend. Okay. But, you know, I, I hope that you see this part, how I get this. Yeah. And it's the act of, I'm creating a, I'm doing that myself. I'm creating that. And then realizing, oh, God, this looks awful to factor. Yeah. I, I mean, factoring this, like, just you giving me this blindly, and it's going to take me a while to factor it. Yeah. But if you understand how I get this, how we initially, like, you know, creating that, and then, and then seeing this part of it where 
it's always going to be whatever you whatever your middle term is divided by two, yeah. which we get three fourths here is the number that's going to go here, and here, yeah. and then and then here. And that's how we get that. All right. So let's finish the problem out. All right. So at this point, what I want to do is take the square root of both sides. Same thing. Okay. So on the left side, I have x plus three fourths is equal to plus or minus, and I'm going to do this, the square root of 41 divided by the square root of 16. If I'm taking the square root of a fraction, I take the square root of, you know, top and bottom. So then the next step, you know, I've still got x plus 3 fourths here is equal to plus or minus the square root of 41 over 4. I can take the square root of 16, okay, right. which is nice. And then I can subtract 3 fourths from both sides, all right, and I got x is equal to negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of 41 over 4. I have a common denominator. So you can write your answer like this, that's fine, mm -hmm. or you could do x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 41 all over 4 because I have a fraction. Right. Does this look familiar to like what you'd see when you do quadratic formula? Okay. Guess what? Completing the square is the quadratic formula. What? Check this out. You don't need to write this down, but just watch. Okay. It's going to be very abstract. So ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. And I'm recording this, so if you like want to rewatch yeah. this, you can. All right. Um, first things first, I'm going to divide everything by a. I'm going to complete the square on this. I'm going to solve for x. And eventually you, eventually get, you get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so BA over X plus C over A is equal to zero. Subtract CA from both sides. C over A. Mm -hmm. So then I get X squared plus B over AX plus blank is equal to negative C over A plus blank. Yeah. Okay. Take my middle term b over a, multiply it by a half, and square it. So I get uh, b over 2a squared. So I get, and, and this is important, I've divided this by 2, I'm going to use that later. Okay, I've got b squared over 4a squared. Yeah. All right, so b squared over 4a squared. So plus b squared over 4a squared. All right, this is going to factor because I already know b, uh, x plus b over 2a mm -hmm. squared. Common denominator of 4a squared, so I'm going to multiply this by 4a over 4a. So I get minus 4ac over 4a squared plus b squared over 4a squared. Let's clean this up a little bit. I've got b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. x plus b over 2a squared. Take the square root of both sides. So this becomes x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus. Uh, the top part is b squared minus 4ac. 2a. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of a squared is a. Subtract b over 2a from both sides. Isn't this crazy? And this is why we use quadratic formula. That's how we get it. Yeah. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So why wouldn't you just use the quadratic formula? You can, twice? but, well, but you have to understand how you get it. Right. All right. So completing the square is just like explaining the quadratic formula. Right. And this, you, you, like in order to get this, you had to do this. Yeah. And, and, and they came up with completing the square before they came up with quadratic right. formula. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how we got it. Cool. Cool.